Nice. Boom. We're here. Well, we are live. We're back. Greetings, back team. Again. 2023. Squad. I feel <laughs> like I just saw you guys uh, last week in uh, freezing cold circumstances. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And John is still dressed for the occasion in his bundled up hoodie I there. Am. <laughs> I ordered this about two months ago, and I forgot that I even ordered it. It came today. So I like it. It's not, it's not black, though, so you can't call yourself a uh, certified no, hacker yet. That's right. So, no. Nope. Nope. I'm not in the same and yeah, category. No, and the hood is not on either. So, uh, <laughs> nope. nope. There are, There's no like, like, like 10 uh, screens behind them, okay. you know, matrixing the out. The pod's not over. It might come out yet. So, yeah, that's so. true. You're, it's it's you, only the beginning are, of the year. It's only the beginning of the yep. year. Yep. You're out of compliance for now, sir. Yeah, <laughs> we'll give you a pass on this one. I'll take it. Thanks, Derek. All right. <laughs> So it's good to have the uh, squad back together. Um, it's been a little bit since we've kind of done a show and recorded. And uh, yeah, here we are. And uh, things haven't really changed, I would say, right? We're still in an interesting state of cybersecurity. It's, uh, we are. You know, it is what it is, right? It's uh, the same same things we're seeing. Uh, I haven't really seen um, you know too many wild and extravagant news stories just yet, which is a good thing, I yeah. guess, at the, end, at yeah. the end of it. Just some... Uh, interesting articles and topics and, and whatnot. So I don't know, do you guys have something you want to kick us off with? Yeah, it's always a good thing when, um, you know, the, for those that don't know, we always try to come up with, to your point, Derek, something that's provocative and like way above the fold, you know, when it comes to uh, any kind of breach right. news or cybersecurity or, or data security. And it was kind of tough right now. I mean, it's, you know, there's always going to be a story. I'll, I'll go ahead and kick us off, um, you know, out of the hacker news uh, in this week, actually, uh, there was a, a an article on unpatched security flaws disclosed in multiple document management systems, right? And so what it comes down to for me and, and also just for the, for the viewer, for the, for the, for the listeners, um, I guess, point of view right right uh, i think i think what we're going to do uh moving forward is each of us is going to bring forward an article and then we're going to present points of view from my role in security leadership derek your yep. role as security engineer right and cto and all the other things and then sammy your role as ethical hacker slash pen tester but exactly, yeah so exactly. i'll yeah, so I'll go ahead and kind of finish that thought on this article here about unpatched, um, you know, security flaws. Here we are again, right? We go back to patching and having right. SLAs and having a patch management policy. And so me as a CISO, these are the types of questions that I would ask. When I see an article like this, I'm asking my team, hey, are we susceptible to this, first of all? You know, the yep. first question is going to be, you know, through, and, and I should know this as a CISO, but through application discovery, right? Do we use any of these document management systems, right? If we do, are we meeting our SLAs? Are we, are we adhering to the uh, patch management policy? Are we doing what we're supposed to be doing, the, the, the basics of cybersecurity to include the patching? So right. That's kind of my, my thought around that. Yeah, I mean, there's still that um, that kind of, you know, back to basics like we always talk about, right? And, you know, I know yeah. it's kind of easier said than done, very, very transparent here because you can't always patch everything, right? And in some cases, right. there's so many hooks and ties into these systems and softwares and, you know, document management could be something that's actually pretty critical too because I think yeah. a lot of times is this is also, I would say, public facing in some regards. It's like, Hey, you're working with your CPA firm, send me a secure tax or tax ID or tax file or secure document transfer working, you're, you're buying a house, you know, whatever it is, right? So yeah. it's more, I would say, exploitable from that regard because you're not just like some protected thing inside. But to your point, it comes back to like one, knowing do you, do you have this risk? Two, you know, what's your risk tolerance of like, hey, no, we have it. It's internal, quote unquote, it's not public facing. You know, your risk becomes lower or, you know, hey, yeah, we had this, you know, we patched it six months ago when the patch came out, which is another issue yeah. that we see too. It's right. people not patching in a, a right. timely fashion, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. What, what? Well, I was going to say real go quick, Sammy, before you go, yeah, these are the types of questions or feedback that I'm looking for so that I can report it up the chain, right? You know, up, up to executive leadership and possibly <clears> beyond. 
you know, if we are kind of falling into this category of potential victim. But yeah, so like all that's really good stuff. Sorry, Sammy, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I was just going to mention, you know, what's what's interesting and unique about this one as well is um, there's also a, a user behavior issue at play, right? Where um, it looks like a lot of these vulnerabilities are a result of uh, importing uh, a malicious document or at least that being kind of the initial the initial step uh, in the in, in the attack chain. So um, it, it, there's kind of a, a interesting point to be made about you know um, this is these are, I mean, that's perhaps why the criticalities are maybe a little bit lower than it possibly could have been because there is still that element there. But yeah. still, it just speaks to the fact that um, you know even with patching, right? There's still kind of the vulnerability that needs to be addressed yeah. of why we're employees importing you know. Um, unknown or, or uh, you know, malicious, yep. potentially malicious documents from untrusted sources, right? 100%. Um, yep. It's kind of, kind of a, 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 a two um, yeah. perspectives to take there, I think. 100%. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. That's a good point. And, and, and just to close the loop, right? So as, as CISO, a lot of times all I need to see is the headline to remind me to talk to my team, right? And if I see anything about patching in a cybersecurity headline, that's going to be for me a trigger. Hey, let's double click on that, right? And so, yeah, all great points. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I think it's one of these like um, sometimes it's boring, right? No one likes doing patch yeah. management. No one, you know, likes having a troubleshoot if a patch doesn't work or blows up a right, server because right. we've all seen that. But yep. it's uh, you can't you can't also stick your head in the sand and just ignore it either, right? It's no, become no, a it's critical necessary it's, evil. It's blocking and tackling. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, having that kind of good VMS, you know, policy procedures in place is, you know, hey, what, when do we patch? What do we patch? How often do we patch? You know, large yeah. enterprises have very rigorous kind of restrictions on when they do it. And some smaller shops are like, yeah, let's just patch on a Friday night and cross our fingers and come in Monday and it's all blown up. So seen right. that too. Don't do that. Yep. Good point. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And how tricky it is to kind of uh, orchestrate or uh, coordinate all these different patch management systems uh, together to do so in like in a timely and effective way is a whole other issue in and of itself. Right. Um, you yeah. know, I was just talking to an engineer yesterday. I was, uh, I forget, I asked him, you know, like what patch management system are you using? Um, he's like, well, are we talking, Windows, Linux, Cisco, you know, we're, we're using something different for all of it. We're talking cloud environment, you know, we're, 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 uh, you know where are we uh, uh, talking patch management? And it just kind of dawned upon me that, yeah, that, that, that's a good point. Everything's kind of it's going hard. to have a unique, uh, yeah, delivery mechanism. And so, um, you know, that kind of coordination in and of itself is, uh, man, yeah. what, a, what, a, what a daunting task. So, yeah, yeah, there um, is no easy one. Yeah. Right. No, great, there, there, great, there really isn't. Yeah. Yeah, great, great uh, article to highlight here. So. And that actually kind of ties in with, you know, continuing the the patch management theme, if you will. Um, uh, there's been some, you know, new uh, vulnerabilities found for a pretty, I'd say, extremely popular software that everyone has used or labbed or touched or uses or, you know, in the, in the wild there, which is uh, VMware. Yeah. Um, so for that to kind of have a, you know, significant vulnerability, um, if you will, from a, um, you know, getting in there and running, you know, running code execution to get it and, and essentially, you know, locking out these configuration files. So you can't launch VMs is, I mean, man, that's extremely catastrophic and right. gives a an attacker a very niche, you know, spearheaded target to go after, in my opinion. So uh, yeah. kind of continues with that theme, too. And for something like this, I mean, to me, that's like, man, that's like high risk. You know, you should be patching because I, I think the I think the, the release was already been out for several months if you will. So it's not just, you know, uh, fairly early new there, but still it's something yeah. that uh, team should be, probably be scrambling to kind of go after right now. So it's a, it's a good yeah. one. Public okay. facing no less too, yep. you know, yep. so that you know, speaks to the, the severity, but this that one actually surprises and bugs me. Like why would that be exposed to the general internet? Right. You know, like why right. would we, we talk about, talk about it all the time, like should your servers have internet access? Like, well, Maybe not, you know, depending on what they really do in their role. Right. Doubtful, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of these things should be locked down. They're very specific niche ports. And yep. I'm sure Shodan scans are going crazy right now looking for this out there. So, yeah, uh, no yeah. doubt. Yep. Yep. They're supposed to be behind the scenes supporting the team, right? And so, right. Not, not front and center. Yeah. 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 You need that kind of core infrastructure, right? Yep. 
And so I believe the initial premise, right, was that VMware had uh, come out and said that this is not a zero day, right? That the, right. the, the research was showing that. And then I think the update, as I, as I understand it, is CISA just released uh, the recovery script for the ESX um, malware, if I, if I understand that correctly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of curious. I need to kind of look into that actually to see how that really works. Um, yeah. But, you know, to be like, you know, we, we've been involved in, in incidents and things like that where, you know, the, the VMware environment gets essentially compromised. And man, I mean, that's like a, you know, big, big target. Because if I can get a hold of that and I can shut down your entire server farm and lock it out, man, you're like in a world of hurt because you're not just restoring backups, you're rebuilding a lot of different things yeah, in some cases. So uh, very difficult. Yeah. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting. Big target they, for Sammy. Yeah, well, that, that's certainly true. Um, and it's kind of just interesting to that they don't think this is part of their ongoing ransomware uh, event. Um, you know, they've confirmed this exists, but they, they've also confirmed that, yeah, no, this is, uh, to our uh, knowledge, not a part or not related. Um, so <laughs> I guess it's a, yeah. you know, tough, tough week at VMware, certainly yeah. that to, to yep. be kind of battling on both fronts there, um, not only yep. an ongoing attack, but, um, uh, they're kind of, uh, trying to prevent, <laughs> uh, additional kind of compromise here, uh, yep. the mass scale. So, um, yeah, no, they, they got their, they got their work cut out for them. Certainly. Uh, I think you know, it's interesting though. I, I would actually almost argue that this in some cases is something like this is actually easier to patch than a thousand machines in some cases, right? Cause you might mm -hmm. have, you know, a couple dozen or less clusters. And if everything's configured, right, you could essentially, you know, migrate to one cluster, rebuild the, the yeah. underlying, you know, ESX reboot it, shift everything back over and kind of do these, you know, real time V motion type uh, you know, migrations to move things over and, you know, get you on, the new updated, you know, kernels and software there, but still it's yeah. finding time to do it, making sure the teams are ready. And in some cases you may not have like remote out of band access or management to these things, which is a different yeah. problem altogether. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it just continues with the whole patching yeah. story. A right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so from a CISO point of view, like this article, when I look at the update and the fact that CISO was able to come forward with the recovery script, so for, mm -hmm. as a as a security leader and, and a CISO, I'm thinking, you know, uh, threat intelligence, uh, specifically open and open source intelligence or OSINT, and and truly how critical it is that we're partnered, you know, with CISA, with FBI, with uh, maybe InfraGuard, the different ISACs, depending on the industry that you're operating in. But it's there is so much good, useful. Uh, intelligence that can be leveraged to help protect your enterprise. And this is just another perfect example of that. And so that's kind of where I'm thinking when I see an article like this and I see what CISA was able to come out with to help right. remediate, to help remediate. Right. And so it's good. Stuff. Yeah, it, just, it just goes to show like how important this, you know, kind of public private sector collaboration has really become. Right. Cause like yeah. you can't just do it. It'll go out it alone. Yeah. It's too big of a beast. And yep. There's no reason people should be working in their own little bubble, right? Yeah. This is just yep. something that I think the community has to get better at. I mean, like, like we, I think we do a, a decent job, you know, holistically, uh, mm -hmm. but there's always, you know, room for improvement. It's kind of nice to yeah. see at least a trending in that in that direction, right? Yeah. And then we, from our perspective as, you know, security practitioners, our job is to then go to our customers and say, hey, did you know about this? Like, like, right. cause like right. I might know, hey, you're running VMware because we manage your network or whatever it is. Yeah. And we know that you're running a vulnerable code. Yep. Hey, let's go ahead and get this thing patched or mediated like real time, right? So our job is try to group and practitioners is to educate our customers yep. and kind of pass that yep. threat intel downstream because not everybody's gonna, you know, be as plugged in as we might be, right? You know it, you yeah. know it, yeah. I mean, that's it's kind one of funny the funny Go ahead, Sammy. Oh, go, go, go for it. No, I was oh. just I was just gonna mention uh, in, in counter to your point. It's kind of funny that to hear what your first or uh, your initial thoughts were, right? You're thinking about how <laughs> Sizzle released a uh, a remediation script and in my head. I'm like, I hope there's a publicly available GitHub for these kind of yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. So I can go well, do, so I can go and test it on our clients, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Test yeah. test and prod and pray on Monday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Right. right. That's it's exactly right.
but yeah, I mean, just to kind of close the loop on what you were saying, Derek, you know, that it's the, 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 the public private Alliance, you know, whenever we do our Trident group VC, so, uh, offerings or discussions or those discovery, uh, you know, discussions, um, you know, one of the things that I always hammer is that it really truly does take a village, you know, and, and, yeah. and we are, we are all villagers in this fight to protect our, you know, not only our own networks and assets, but really all of communities. And this is just screaming for that. Exactly. But, yep. <clears throat> Keep that education top of mind. It's all we can do. Yep. Yep. Just front and center. That's absolutely right, sir. Well, I've had a interesting one that I've been looking at here. Um, that I don't know if you guys have heard about the recent, uh, quite massive spike in that malvertising, malvertising, malware advertising, as it's, yep. uh, as it's as it's uh, as the term is coined. Um, but yeah, the the you know mass campaign exploiting Google Ads, um, cur you know uh, cur currently ongoing and um, likely will continue to see you know massive upticks moving into the future here. Um, Major brands are being targeted, but brands like you know Thunderbird, Visual Studios, Grammarly. I thought this was pretty notable. <clears throat> um, one because of the novelty uh, of the well, the, the payload and the payload loader uh, being used, uh, but just how widespread it is, right? So yeah. um, essentially, what's happening is you know, <clears throat> excuse me, attackers are you know masquerading uh, sites with typical type of squatting. Um, you know, masquerading as, as legitimate sites, um, but are now, you know, paying for top, top advertising, you know, top promotion, top advertising placement, um, and, you know, redirecting users. And you know, kind of an interesting nuance here is uh, Google will allow you to display one website, but actually uh, navigates you to another upon click, right? And, you know, kind of the, the details of that are a little bit beyond the scope of this um, of this conversation, but that is now being connected with uh, some already uh, some some malware that are, has already existed, but has been recently enhanced uh, to, to, with some seriously evasive um, kind of techniques here. Yep. Uh, and so it's being coined by a Sentinel One, who's kind of led the research on this um, as Malvert, M-A-L-V-I-R-T. All right. Makes sense. Um, and this is basically, you know, uh, uh, being ex exploited in mass uh, in the wild and is distributing uh, pre-existing payloads. Like I think one was called X Loader and another one was called, um, uh, it was some unique name. I can't even keep up with the amount of uh, unique kind of uh, naming conventions we have for payloads these days. But regardless, um, what, what are the novelty kind of uh, uh, techniques that it uses is is virtualization uh, to avoid sandbox detection, right? So it first detects, you know, am I being executed in the sandbox? No. Okay. Let's uh, let's go ahead and spin up a virtualized environment. Uh, I think the the the, uh, the uh, specific module is called Koi VM by um, Visual Studio, and basically what this does is, uh, upon execution, it actually translates the existing code into its unique kind of virtualization language, which, which as you can imagine, makes, you know, op obfuscate, well, uh, it makes detection or analysis of that original source code much more difficult. Uh, sure. And so we're, we're now using this to bypass most EDRs. Um, you know, in the article that I had looked at, I think only one or two um, organizations on VirusTotal had detected any of the payloads. So. Um, this is this is pretty substantial, and this has really come as a result of um, Microsoft not too long ago disabling macros by default, and so that kind of really put a uh, you know a pin in a lot of uh, organizations' kind of methodology, right? And so now, in an effort to kind of find a new avenue for mass kind of phishing attempts, um, this is what we're starting to see. Uh, and that's the, the, the what, what's scary about these things is how well they actually mask the software downloads, right? They're, they're you're actually downloading legitimate packages. Um, you know, your the, the software. It's not like they're just you know forgetting to give you the software. They're also providing right. you the original software, but they're just you know happening to package these uh, malicious components on on the back end, right? Uh, and so yeah, it's uh, it's kind of put Google in this position where we're like, well, we don't really. 
uh, have anything that we can do immediately. There's certain things that we can yeah. start to move towards, right? But this is this there's there's really no silver bullet or mediation for this. Um, so yeah, right. Because pretty, pretty, it's, pretty... it's like, how do you differentiate between like a valid advertiser and a malicious advertiser? Like it's like from a technical perspective, it'd be very hard. You know, to them, it's like, hey, it's just revenue. It's like, hey, it's a new customer. They right. want to advertise certain keywords. We pay X amount a month. You know, because like that's their business, right? I'm sure between Google, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, you know, all these high-end social media platforms, they probably get millions of clicks on the, or not, maybe not clicks, but at least visits and views on, or like, you know, sprays out there on who's, who's seeing these potential mm -hmm. malicious ads, which is pretty, pretty wild and scary in my opinion. Yeah. Well, that's a good point. You know, you throttle your ability to register as a, as an advertiser, you're throttling your business. And so now they have to kind of yeah. find the line in their policy right. of like what, what is going to be considered a legitimate advertiser, advertiser? what's the minimum level of um of legitimacy right and so yeah. you know like how how long is a certification need to be around you know like an like site cert before it's considered a valid site and that that's a really difficult question to answer so um you know i know they're going to do a lot more uh well their response was yes we're going to do a lot more advertiser verification right we're going to make sure that you know we're working with real vendors uh and they have right. some hist history of conducting business Right before we, you know, offer them the, the ability to 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 run ads. Yeah. Domains um, not registered two days ago and things like that, you know. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So yeah, yeah, very very nasty yep. stuff. Um, and if, if you want to look into the tactic into the technicals, Sentinel One has a really good uh, technical breakdown of uh, exactly how it's kind of evading um, you know, endpoints and whatnot. So check that so out. So mal malvert. Malvert, yes, sir. Malvert. Yeah, yeah. I keep, I, so I'm thinking like all these nerd babies are going to get born this week and they're going to get named Malvert. I yeah, hope not, John. Yep. Well, really I mean, you never not. know, Derek. You never know. It'll be a you know, tough, a lot tough time of... at school for them on some of those people. Yeah, yeah. It does Malvert. sound close enough to a Star Wars character that I can yeah. see a good percentage of the info set. Sammy's got a good point uh, there. Taking right, that up right. as a as a potential. I had a friend. I had a friend that was a uh, a street cop in Kansas City, and he always tells me about the one like traffic stop, right? That he did, and um, mm -hmm. you know, got the name, right? What's your, you know, that you know, name, license, registration. The right. name was the name was Absida. Any any guesses Absida. on how you spell okay. how you spell Absida? I have no clue. A, I wouldn't even know where to begin. A B C D E. Okay. Okay. No okay. Kidding. Uh, okay. That was her name. So I'll take Malvert. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey. All right. Okay. So there's my argument. There's my pitch for Malvert. Next I like time. that. John, John. John Selling. Absolutely. So, so Sammy, this kind of just goes to show that, you know, ads are bad, right? Like, do we need them? Do we do we want them? You know, is there any is there any good ads out there that you ever like? Like, hey, this has got my attention. I. I actually won this free iPad. I should I should click this link. Yeah, I would say the current state of promoted ads is is pretty it's pretty lethal. It's pretty risky, right? Um, in, in in my opinion, you're better off just going through typical business flow use case, right? So just going to the website, downloading from there. Um, otherwise, yeah, you're you're if you're going through those that that promotional ad section. Um, you're kind of setting yourself up for so so i'd be curious like so if you have say like an ad blocker running in your browser would that even prevent this from happening if you never saw the ad to click it uh well this is the 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 forced promoted i mean this is not like a pop-up ad this is like what google is, is displaying okay. in their primary searches yeah. that's, that's what that's what, that's what makes this such top, a big deal top, like four yeah. results or something yeah yeah and that's what's making this kind of crazy because this is like for legitimate advertisers like arab uh, brands like visual studio right and it's uh, think about the the exposure that google has yeah, so the, the millions this is, of people are going to see that's that. that's exactly right so that's what's kind of making this is where um a lot of efforts are being played. Like people are moving away from email phishing and, and trying to get you to enable macros that are now moving towards this. This is kind of the modern landscape as uh, when it comes to mass phishing campaigns, mass mm -hmm. malware distribution, right? Because yeah. who has yeah. greater reach than Google? Who, who has yeah. greater engagements than Google, right? And so, um, yeah, this is this is. That's a good point. Stuff. 
and, and that's actually something I've noticed too that I say is becoming more, I don't know what the right word is, more of an issue is the, even like the, almost like the first page now, the first half of the first page is like ads. So it's like, yeah. hey, like, do I really, do I really want this to be like my main search engine anymore? Like, right. It actually kind of like, like not to derail this whole thing, but this kind of goes back to the whole open AI, AI chat we've been talking about. Hundred percent. Right. Or if I just, if I yeah. want a simple answer, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna like, I wouldn't necessarily say trust that. I'm gonna kind of reference something more like that to give me the real quick answer versus like if I'm gonna research a story or you know, the history of something, it's different. But if it's like, hey, give me the context for how this script runs. Why would I waste my time on something like that? Where I'm going to get 25 ads about Python scripting or yeah. courses or something like that if I want to if I search a keyword. So no, yeah, very is, interesting where things are going to go on that. But it, it is crazy what an ad-driven society we live in, right? Like when I look at and, and kind of staying on the Google theme, you know, Gmail. You know, I'm mm -hmm. I'm almost to the point of OCD with my folders, right? I'm always you know, a couple months ago, I got that list for each of my folders down to like oh, one screen where I don't have a scroll button. You would absolutely hate my inbox, John, by the way. Yeah, oh, it's no, just I, like the wild I, west out there. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, it, it drives me crazy. But every single one of those, whether it's, um, you know, what is it like social, uh, promotions, yes. updates, you yep. always get those two ads. Who, I, I'm sure nobody here, but like who's reading those ads? Like to me, it's right. just... Those are like finger clicks every time. Double yeah. Click, click, click. They come back in five minutes. Click, click. You know. Yep. So really, it's you can't get rid of it. No. So it really, the more I think about it, they might be promoting OCD. But um. Yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> That's yeah, a great point. Yeah. It's a, it's a whole whole separate. Screen. It's a whole other. It, and actually, too, I mean, like thinking ahead, not to turn this into something crazy, but mm -hmm. with you know being, you know, elections coming around the corner and all this kind of stuff, man, we're going to see the advertising go through the roof. Yeah. And that's going to be a whole separate target, in my opinion, on its own from the, yeah. the political aspect. So yeah. get, get, get ready for that one. Like, that's my prediction for next year. I'm going to call okay. it. Yeah, well, all right. that's, all right. that's also You're locked kind of in it's interesting. You're locked in. Um, about, yeah, and that's kind of what's interesting about this battle or campaign and the timing of it all. Um you know, I wonder how much of this is ramping up for that, right? Because the payloads that they're dropping are not um, necessarily all remote code execution, like uh, you know, C2, okay. you know, C2 command and control uh, beacon back to you know our, our 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 control server. It's actually a lot of it's just information stealing. Um, you know, part, and, and part of that I wonder, right? And you know, part of that is system information, but part of that is like individual user data, uh, right? Some some amount of PII depending on what um, you know, what, what, what kind of security settings they have enabled on the sites that they're currently visiting as well as like what they have in, in, the, in their local uh, cache. But um, I wonder how much of this is going to be weaponized in, in future political campaigns yeah. or in large scale, l l large scale engagements. Right. That kind of information or data is kind of valuable right now. Um, so to, to, to certain data brokers, I, I think that would be pretty valuable to have. Um, We're going to mark this clip down and revisit it in about a year. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, 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 we'll see. The prediction comes true. But going back to your point about OpenAI, yeah, I think that's why Google right now is kind of um, scrambling, really, to to come up with their own uh, AI-enabled search engine, right? Because yeah. I think to your point, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, ChatGPT was kind of oh, oh, not oversold. It, what it is 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 absolutely incredible. But I think some of the aspects of it, some of the features of it, may have been a little bit um, oversold, but to me, what was the, the, the biggest or the most obvious benefit was probably the uh, yeah the consolidation of information, right? It, it was almost like we we just went from you know library to Google all over again, right? Because now now right. we no longer have to go to and 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 again, I, you know why that's bad for for Google? I mean, I don't know what, where do you see the revenue opportunity for the adver advertising revenue opportunity for ChatGPT currently, right? I mean, you you kind of yeah. have to interface with it you're not really constantly being fed um dynamic pages with different yeah, advertisements once you're right? in so, you're in right one stop that's shopping. right yeah, yeah. i'm sure yeah. they'll find a way to you know make oh, money off of it you know yeah. whether it's through advertising oh. or i'm sure most it's likely fun. like it might be like like in my opinion like subscription based like hey you get you know 10 queries a month for free if you want to run unlimited queries or use the API in the yeah. back end, you pay hundred bucks a month or whatever. And I guarantee you people will do that all day. I mean, I would like, why not? Yeah. 
yeah, super certainly. clean interface and just like you talk to it like a super smart, you know, something you might see in Star Wars, like, hey, tell me about the history of whatever. It's very you yeah. know, straightforward, streamlined, not this. Like I kind of joke saying like if I want a recipe about something, I don't get a story about why my why someone's grandma likes this, you know, brand of sugar. Like I don't care. Just give me the give yeah. me the recipe for how to make cookies. Yeah. There you go. Give me what I asked for. <laughs> right. You know. Right, right. right. So yeah, very, very good stuff. Stuff, stuff for our, our audience to kind of noodle over and uh, think about there. So, yeah. yep. So with that, um, John, any kind of closing thoughts you have for anybody out there? You want to give any words of wisdom? I mean, you know, everything that we talk about, like not only this pod, but you know, past and future pods. If there are any questions, any problem sets, challenges that we're facing, call us. Right, reach out to us. Call, email, text. Trident Group is here for you. Like I literally, the, the more that I engage clients and prospects and our, our customer base, there is not a problem or a challenge that can be brought forward that we can't solve for just because of rock stars like, you know, that are assembled here and beyond. But um, yeah, just, it's more of a pitch, right? For Trident Group, speaking on, of advertising, on that note, staying on that. Really, really exciting things coming. We just got back, we were all together. It's some great conversations, great late meetings, lots of brainstorming. Um, super pumped up for uh, 2023 here. So yeah, it's great. 100%. How about you, Sammy? Anything? Close us out with? Well said. No, just other than stay safe out there. Um, you know, things are things are looking pretty pretty uh, intense. So uh, you know, be vigilant. Uh, keep keep up. You know, keep learning. Um, we'll we'll get through this thing certainly. Keep your cyber guard up. I like that. It's a good way to close it out. Yep. And I would say my, my closing thoughts would be if you have vulnerable VMware out there, go take care of it like immediately. That's a big yeah. one. Patch and get system. it off the internet. Yep. All right, everybody. Uh, like, subscribe, give us some comments. Let us know what you want to see in future shows. And uh, yeah, this is uh, good, good catching up. And uh, we'll see everybody soon. Yep. Take care. Excellent stuff. Thanks, guys. guys. See you next Bye. time. Bye.